What is the transformation that this teaching points to? What actually happens when I reach the top of the pyramid? In the tutorial on knowledge and being, we examined how learning proceeds step by step, one step of knowledge, followed by a step of verification, and we applied this principle to observing negative emotions. In the tutorial on payment and effort, we examined the wrong attitudes behind negative emotions and experimented with sacrificing them. In the tutorial on positive attitudes, we examined how our higher moments of consciousness may form new attitudes, attitudes that then remain even when our consciousness declines. Self-study, sacrificing wrong attitudes, creating new attitudes, these are fundamental aspects of working with negativity. But what is the ultimate aim behind the non-expression of negative emotions? In this tutorial, we will explore that aim. We will draw from the Hindu myth of the churning of the milky ocean, specifically the base of the churning, where Vishnu incarnates in the form of a turtle to support Mount Mandara. And we will use this myth to convey the transformative potential behind the non-expression of negative emotions. Self-observation and self-study must, from the first, be accompanied by the struggle against the expression of unpleasant emotions. This teaching portrays man as a multiplicity. My thoughts, my physical sensations, my moving impulses, and my emotions are all eyes. One eye rises, exists for a few moments, and is then replaced by a new and different eye. Each eye speaks for the whole as if I were unified, which is why we call them many eyes. The sense of eye behind our eyes, however, is not equal. For example, in a neutral moment, such as now, it is relatively simple for me to raise my hand before my eyes and look at it as a mechanical lever of skeleton, muscle and tissue that is not me, not I. But if my hand were injured and in pain, it would be much more difficult for me to maintain this separation. The eyes that arise in a moment of negativity, anger, fear, injustice, come with a particularly strong sense of I, which is why resisting their expression requires a particularly challenging effort. The idea is to create resistance, otherwise we cannot absorb. And this creation of resistance is the introduction to the study of emotions. We cannot see them without it. Returning to the Hindu churning myth, the stronger the pull of habit, the stronger must the pull of discipline be if we are to keep the balance between the two sides. If I'm actually successful in pulling against negativity by resisting its expression, then the friction generated from this internal churning will be much greater than separating from my moving center in a neutral moment, such as the example of looking at my hand as something separate from myself. Accordingly, Note how, in the churning image, the asuras are portrayed as negatively charged, while the devas have neutral human faces. Friction generates energy. Physical friction generates fire. If we take a wooden rod and churn it against a firm surface, the friction will eventually combust. The wood will transform into fire. The internal friction caused by the non-expression of negative emotions has the potential of combustion, the potential of transformation. Some intellectual eyes are free from the emotional center and can see things impartially. They can say, I had this negative emotion all my life. Did I get a penny? No. I only paid and paid and paid. That means it is useless. The transformation in this work occurs on the level of my identity, my sense of I. Since negative eyes come with the strongest sense of I, 
resisting their expression has the strongest potential of extricating that sense of I from the many eyes to real I. This transformation of identity must stand at the base of my effort. Back to the Hindu myth, at first, when the devas and asuras tug at Mount Mandara, the mountain begins sinking into the ocean of milk and the churning effort is wasted. Seeing this, the Lord Vishnu incarnates in the form of a turtle to support the mountain from below, enabling the churning to continue till the nectar of immortality is retrieved. This aspect of the myth points to the importance of foundation. On what foundation am I resisting the expression of negativity? I can resist yelling at my boss to avoid losing my job. I can resist cursing a stranger to avoid entering a fight. I can resist criticizing a friend to avoid losing their favor. All these are examples of resisting the expression of negative emotions, but not on the foundation of transformation. The Lord Vishnu represents the master or real I. Non-expression of negativity should be founded on transforming my sense of I from the many eyes to the master to real I. Success would mean that my sense of I would no longer be a fleeting thing moving from thought to thought, impulse to impulse, emotion to emotion. My sense of I would become a permanent presence independent of the many eyes and observant of them. The transformation this work offers is the transformation of I from plurality towards unity. Which brings us to this week's exercise. We will conclude our focus on negative emotions by bringing the imagery of the churning myth to as many moments of our day, aiming to pull against our many eyes, especially negative eyes, with the specific aim of extricating our sense of I from the many into an observer. This observer is the beginning of unity, of developing our inner master. Inner unity is obtained by means of friction, by the struggle between yes and no in man. If a man lives without inner struggle, if Everything happens in him without opposition. If he goes wherever he is drawn or wherever the wind blows, he will remain such as he is.